Hey, welcome back to Curiosity Hub, I'm Ollie Hubbard. This is the third episode in a series on intelligence, so if you want to get up to date and catch the rest, they're just there. So when do you think AI started? The 2000s, even way back to 1990? Well, it was actually the summer of 1956. That is the same year as Elvis's first hit, or the year Sputnik launched. I mean, it's pretty crazy to think that in a workshop in Dartmouth College, AI was formally born 61 years ago. But AI hasn't just smoothly progressed since then. There have been a series of AI winters. This comes from the idea of a nuclear winter and basically just means long periods of time when no substantial AI research was being done. But the guys at Dartmouth College started pretty confident. I mean, they were producing AI that was playing chess and checkers and even moving physical arms to control blocks or even like a giant modern day mini vacuum thing that could work its way through a room. The only problem was that they soon found these AIs were very specialized. And although they were good within their own little micro worlds, they were having real trouble making like a generalized intelligence. So in 1974, both the US and British governments pulled most of their funding out of AI research. And it was the beginning of an AI winter. But throughout the winter, general development and research into computers continued. And Moore's law was observed, with the number of transistors in an integrated circuit doubling about every two years. Essentially, computers were just getting exponentially more powerful, which meant smaller and faster. So the AI winter ended in the early 1980s, and it was mainly thought out by military funding. For example, DARPA was developing an autonomous truck, where I think the end game was clearly Optimus Prime, and they were even working on like a pilot's associate, which was kind of meant to work like R2-D2. A lot of AI research at this time was trying to create a generalized intelligence by patching together specialized systems that were experts in their areas. Kind of like a patchwork quilt. People believed this concept was so promising that funding for AI research hit $1 billion by 1985. But unfortunately, the problems of pattern recognition and just plain old common sense were enormous and we hit another AI winter in the early 1990s. This winter ended with the reawakening of deep learning. This concept started in the mid 20th century, but it really gained traction in the late 1990s. Essentially, we just looked at the brain and said, it's really good at generalized intelligence. Why don't we just copy it? So copying the brain structure gave the computers the ability to really learn from the basics, from experience. So within software, we gave the computers neural networks, just like in our own brains. And these neural networks optimize themselves unsupervised. They strengthen the neural paths which lead to the correct answer. And the deep in deep learning refers to the multiple levels, which provides, overall, a greater intelligence. This form of AI has proved the most successful. We're currently living in an AI spring. For example, you may have heard that last year an AI program called AlphaGo beat a nine damn professional Go player. Now Go is a board game like chess or checkers, but it is so much more complicated. On a regulation 19 by 19 board, the game can play out more ways than the amount of atoms in the known universe. But AlphaGo's most interesting move was move 37 in game two. This move surprised everyone. AlphaGo's professional opponent even had to leave the room to comprehend what had happened. But another Master Go player who had been training with AlphaGo remarked, This is not a human move. I've never seen a human play this move. In fact, the way he described AlphaGo's move was beautiful. However, in Game 4, AlphaGo's human opponent made a move that it couldn't comprehend. The move cleverly left open so many options that the AI couldn't comprehend all the future outcomes and ultimately made a wrong move, leading to a human victory for Game 4. But this situation was not zero-sum. The AI won the match, but humans were introduced to new moves and ways of thinking that we'd never seen before. And the AI also became more intelligent through its experience. So perhaps it's through working together that humans and computers will increase overall intelligence. A good example of this is George Hotz. He has created a self-driving car almost single-handedly to rival the massive car companies. But rather than using massive teams of engineers and programmers, he has just done it with him 
and artificial intelligence. By working alongside AI, George has enhanced his own ability to create. And in a similar way, AI is working alongside doctors to detect cancers better, and it's even working with police to predict areas of potential crimes. But you might ask, AI is learning all this knowledge, but does it really understand what it's dealing with? Well, a good definition comes from the author of Brave New World, Aldous Huxley, who defines these terms by saying knowledge is knowledge of the final article, and understanding is understanding of the raw material. With that definition though, perhaps a better question is, do humans understand? As we're currently getting answers from AI where we don't understand the process, but the solution works, so we know and trust the final article. From this idea it's easy to question, will AI gain consciousness, or does it already have it? Well this requires an understanding of consciousness, which we don't currently have. But if that interests you, just let me know because the final episode will actually just be answering your questions from anything in this series. So really, if there's anything at all, just ask. Also, if you want to know some more biological ways we can increase our intelligence, the answer's right there. And if you enjoyed this episode and want to join our community, feel free to subscribe. And as always, stay curious. Don't forget the question.